Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Editor Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 hours. We're going to be starting things out with the Apple iPhone. Yet again, there has been an update for the story, as Apple bring forward their replacement plans for the iPhones and batteries, plus as well other vendors are weighing in on the whole controversy, because of course they are, marketing. And then we're going to finish the video with Intel's Goldman Plus architecture specifically some changes of the architecture which should improve the performance of these particular cpu lines but as i said first things first apple so i won't regale you with the whole story of this because i'm sure most of you have heard it by now but in case you haven't the very too long didn't read is that apple um have been caught throttling the performance of iphones if the battery has gone through a certain number of cycles this was first discovered by one user who claimed the performance of his phone went up if he changed the new battery to change to a new battery, excuse me. And then this was further confirmed by others. And then eventually Apple confirmed this themselves. And now her promise to release an iOS update, which will inform users if they are indeed slowing down the performance of the phone, plus as well offering a battery battery replacement service, excuse me, for just 29 US dollars. This is considerably cheaper than the 79 US dollars that Apple typically charge for out of warranty battery replacements. Now, the updates are as follows. Firstly, Apple have decided to tweak their offering and you can now get your battery replaced by Apple right now. With a short statement to the media, which is as follows, we expected to need more time to be ready, but we are happy to offer our customers the lower pricing right away. But they have warned that initial supplies of certain replacement batteries may be limited. This does, however, mean that you're going to need an iPhone 6 or later, as we've discussed previously, and this offer will be available until December 2018. So if I were you, if your battery is in a really bad state, it might be a good idea to get this done now, especially if your battery happens to be one of the batteries suffering from supply shortages. Meanwhile, what happens when one of your competitors is having problems? Well, of course, LG, Samsung, HTC, Motorola, and so on have decided to kick Apple while they're down. Because of course they have. Uh, there are numerous statements from these companies. Here's LG's. We never have. We never will. We care about what our customers think. Samsung's product quality has been and always will be Samsung's mobile top priority. We ensure extended battery life of Samsung mobile devices through multi-layer safety measures, which include software algorithms that govern the battery charging current and charging duration. We do not reduce CPU performance through software updates over the life cycles of the phone. And this, by the way, is in addition to other statements, including those of HTC and Motorola, and they have also confirmed much the same that they simply are not going to throttle the performance of the phone. Now, all of this is great and all, however, uh, I think that at least a couple of you are furiously typing right now in the comments section, well, Samsung can't exactly be too boisterous with its claims. After all, there are certain things which happened with the Note 7, after all. And yes, while the, you know, slowing down of your phone's processor isn't exactly great for PR, particularly as you weren't even told it was happening, at least it didn't explode, right? In my mind, um, a company should just be called out when it does something unethical or just screws up. This isn't to say that Apple shouldn't be criticised heavily. They should also be applauded for certain decisions. As I mentioned just a few days ago, one of the things I really like about their particular policy changes is now they are requiring... Uh, games companies to actually inform users the odds behind loot boxes, which I find absolutely awesome. That a user should have an idea what the chances are that they're going to get a particular item and or something of value. So, you know, if the chances are one in a million that you're going to get that epic loots, well, okay, if you still want to plunk down the dollar or whatever the charge is, well, that's down to you. So I do feel, once again, that Apple were in the right for doing this, and I really applaud them for it. Unfortunately, the bad publicity with the iPhone situation is just terrible. And once again, I honestly think that they would have been really, really, really praised if they'd have handled this in a, just a very different way. 
and I won't bore you too much, but I honestly feel that they should have just had a little chat box that popped up after a certain number of cycles that said, hey, we've noticed your battery has hit this number of cycles. We advise that if you have any issues with your phone to enable this option, which throttles the performance, you can also get the battery replaced. Or um, if the phone happened to hard reboot, much the same thing. It would say, you know what? Um, we've noticed the phone's hard rebooted. We suggest that you put this uh, option on. Um and, you know, Bob's your uncle. And then, obviously, after that, it would give you the guff of, well, if you do want to replace your iPhone with battery, here's how to do it, and then give you the links. But they didn't do that, and they are getting egg on their face. But let's face it, all companies at some point or another get egg on their face. So it is what it is. It's just Apple's um, turn to be bent over the bar stool, so to speak. Anywho, uh, let's talk about Intel's Goldman Plus architecture. This is not all of the information in the world, unfortunately, but it is rather interesting because um, obviously one of the things that Apple... Uh, I'm sorry, I've just got Apple on the bloody brain right now. One of the things that Intel obviously have in its mind right now is the fact that Qualcomm and ARM are definitely going to become more popular. We've discussed previously, I believe it was Amy that discussed this, how Windows 10... Uh, essentially can now run on ARM devices. This is essentially through an emulation layer. So obviously one of the things that uh, Intel want to do is to put out uh, competitive processors which will ha help to fend this off. So the original Goldman architecture had been originally unveiled back in April of 2016 and it does have much of the architecture design borrowed from Skylake and is designed for a plethora of different uses including uh, Atom, Celeron, and Pentium, and it is built upon a 14nm uh, process. Goldman Plus is going to be very similar. It's still going to be a system on chip. It's going to be used in Atom, Celeron, and Pentium Silver processors, and from what we understand, is also going to be built on a 14nm uh, process, but there are numerous optimizations. So what are these optimizations? Well, Predominantly, it definitely comes down to the shared level pre-decode cache, and this has been drastically increased. It's gone from 16 kilobytes to 64 kilobytes, which is essentially four times the amount. There are a few uh, things also designed for performance. Uh, these include, but not limited to, uh, Intel's decision to expand Goldmont's backend pipeline. So from a freeware allocation slash retire, and it's now gone up to four-way allocation slash retire. There is, how, there is, however, excuse me, still the predecessor's free-wide fetch and decode pipeline, which remains in place. A few other small changes include a wider integer execution unit, and there's also a dedicated JEU port, which in theory should uh, support faster bar uh, branch redirection. For those who don't know, I'm sure most of you do, but I'll quickly go into it. The integer unit is responsible for executing integer data type instructions. So, for example, this might be something like a branch, it might be a simple calculation, that type of thing. Intel have also decided to add a shared second level instruction and data TLB, translation look aside buffer. The TLB, by the way, is a cache which is used to reduce time taken to access a memory's location. And this is for translations of virtual memory to physical memory. One small negative with this architecture, however, is there is a small increase in um, branch misprediction. And that is that it goes to 13 cycles rather than 12 cycles. And this is also going to be built on a modular design. Now, unfortunately... Um, we've discussed this multiple times, and perhaps I'll do a more in-depth video on it. A couple of people have actually asked me to kind of do a whole Intel AMD state of affairs as we enter 2018, and I'm considering doing that. Um, it depends on my time schedule over the next few weeks. As some people know, I'm going to be heading to Norway on the 21st of January. I'll only be there for about five days, but I do have an awful lot of uh, reviews to finish off. We've got another keyboard and mouse coming Um Plus as well, I'm finishing off another Threadripper uh, part of a review. I've got some other bits and bobs as well that's going to be finished over the next few days. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm running a little bit behind schedule yet again, but I just really need some time off over Christmas. Anywho, um, Intel, however, have been pretty late with 10NM. 
And originally, you know, some of these architectures which are on 14 nm, uh, supposedly, uh, if you believe the rumor mill, had a, been kind of touted to be on 10 nm. And so what we're seeing is the emergence of certain chips which shouldn't really have existed, at least in the state of uh, at least in the state of play they do right now. So it looks like 10 nm is not going to happen until probably Ice Lake when it comes to uh, low power processors, and therefore. It's all a bit weird for Intel at the moment. You would think they would actually have more, I don't know, more publicity around this, I suppose. They'd probably push it a bit more. It almost seemed to be, I don't want to say push to the back end of the year, but let's face it, at this point, press coverage is pretty slow. People are not really paying so much attention to the news cycles. and Plus as well, there's not been as much marketing behind it. There's not been as many press statements behind it. And, you know, it, it, it just feels kind of a more... Oh yeah, we're kind of doing this as well. Yeah, you know, they're just kind of tossing it out there. And that is been a big problem with Intel, not necessarily recently. In fact, it's actually contrary to Intel recently. Intel have been pretty boisterous when it comes to um, pretty much letting you know everything they do under the sun. They've been very, very, very good at releasing you know, documents and releasing information. In fact, a very common complaint, and you may think this is insane, but it's actually true. A lot of tech journalists were not very happy with Intel, especially back in, I'm going to say more the Haswell era, something around those lines, uh, because although Intel, of course, were releasing performance data and were giving out review samples and that type of thing, they were a lot more cagey. They were a lot cagier when it came to actually uh, putting stuff out, uh, telling the, like, the architect tweaks and AMD, of course, were trying to let anyone under the sun know, whereas Intel were just like, yeah, well, here's a new architecture. So I guess it's just how the times change. Speaking of times change, it is currently 5.17pm, a nice random number for you, well, random time, I suppose. So uh, in a few hours, of course, it will be 2018. So I'm going to wish you a happy one. Uh, happy New Year, and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.